Whether you're looking to start a full-time business or just make some cash on the side, there's never been a better time to start earning money online. Today, we're going to look at 11 different methods you can use to start making money from the comfort of your own home. Stay tuned, and by the end of this video, you'll learn the ideas you need to start generating sustainable income for years to come. Hi everyone, I'm your host Stephanie Pellet, and I'm a creative business coach. Every week, Learn with Shopify brings you new tips and strategies to help you start and grow a successful business. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure to hit that button below to be notified about future videos. Now, more than ever, you have the ability to make money online, no matter what kind of skills or experience level you might have. But not all income generating options are created equal. In this video, I'll be breaking down the pros and cons of 11 different business strategies that you can implement from home. I'll start by sharing some of the important factors you need to consider when choosing your preferred business model. I'll use these factors to evaluate some popular money-making ideas and share real-life examples of businesses that have successfully implemented them. By the end of this video, you'll understand the advantages and limitations of each of these options so that you have the concrete, realistic knowledge you need to choose the one that's right for you. I want to note that in this video, I'm going to be focusing on ways to make money that you can grow over time into a sustainable business. You can absolutely make good money on the internet by doing things like taking surveys or transcribing audio, and those can be great options when you're just starting out. That being said, I'm guessing that if you clicked on this video, you're probably hoping to gain more freedom over your time and energy by building a business of your own. So while some of these strategies may take a bit longer to implement upfront, they're also more likely to pay off for you in the long run. There are a few key factors to consider when choosing your business model. Effort is the amount of skill, knowledge, or experience you'll need in order to execute this idea. Leverage refers to how easily you could scale up this business. A high leverage idea isn't a one-to-one -one trade of time for money. And of course, startup cost is the upfront budget you'll need in order to start this business from scratch. Many people would assume that the perfect business model would be low effort, high leverage, and have low startup costs. But no business model is perfect and everyone is different. As you'll see, each of these options requires certain trade-offs and only you can decide which one feels most aligned with your unique skills and interests. Number one, dropshipping. In a dropshipping business, customers purchase an item from your online store and a third-party company fulfills and ships that order to them. This business model is quickly growing in popularity since the startup costs and overhead tend to be quite low. As the business owner, you aren't responsible for buying or holding inventory, which gives you leverage to grow and expand your business further. That said, there is a lot of competition in this type of business. With dropshipping, you can only sell existing available products, which means other businesses may be selling similar, if not identical products to yours. In order to be successful, it's important to have excellent branding, a specific and interesting niche, and outstanding customer support. You're unlikely to stand out in a crowded marketplace without prioritizing these key factors. One business that we love in this market is Subtle Asian Treats, a dropshipping store that sells adorable bubble tea inspired phone cases and plushies. This store has been successful because of their fun personality, insightful knowledge of their target market, and a willingness to experiment with different dropshipping products to see what works best for them. If you're thinking about starting a dropshipping business, this free 45 minute workshop will walk you through how to start and launch a successful dropshipping store. Register using this link to gain access to the free on-demand webinar that's helped over 100,000 entrepreneurs. Number two, print on demand. Print on demand is similar to dropshipping, but with a twist. In this business model, you put your own spin on products by adding custom designs that will appeal to your ideal customer. This business model has a lot of advantages. It doesn't require much upfront cost and provides great leverage since another company will fulfill and ship your orders based on demand. This means that you can easily test new revenue streams without taking on any risk, and you can offer a wide variety of products without the hassle of purchasing or shipping them. This is an especially great option if you want to monetize an audience that you already have by offering your own customized merchandise. In order to be successful with this business model, you'll need to prioritize your designs. It is essential to create beautiful, unique slogans and artwork that resonate with your customers. Now, without an existing audience, it may take time for you to start generating sales in this type of business, but the low risk and high potential reward make it a great option to explore. Passion Fruit is a successful print-on-demand business that sells inclusive clothing and accessories for the LGBT QQIA community to show their pride all year long. Their designs are fun, interesting, and stylish, and perfectly positioned to appeal to their audience. 
If you love the idea of running a semi-automated business from anywhere, then you're going to want to register for this free webinar that will teach you how to quickly start a profitable print-on-demand store. This 40-minute webinar will get you from product idea to setting up an online store to getting your first print-on-demand sale. Just click this link to gain instant access. Number three, custom or curated products. If you want complete control over every aspect of your business, creating or curating custom products could be the perfect fit. You'll be able to customize your product quality, design, aesthetics, and packaging, and these details can help your store stand out from the competition. While this option does require some additional labor in shipping your orders, this extra work can be reframed as an advantage, as it allows you to add personality and branding to every step of your customer's experience. Since building relationships is key to longevity in your business, maintaining this level of personal connection with your clients is a huge bonus when it comes to sustainability over time. Unlike dropshipping and print-on-demand businesses, creating or curating your products will require some startup capital in order to purchase your materials and packaging. It can also be more difficult to scale as a business model, especially if you are creating your products by hand, as with many jewelry and home decor businesses, for example. To increase your leverage, you can work directly with manufacturers to produce items made to your specifications or curate items from wholesale suppliers and other sources to resell on your own platform. While there are many examples of businesses selling custom products, one company we love is Cedar and Sale, a homewares company offering handmade geometric planters, coasters, candles, and funky shapes and objects. Their unique designs and attention to detail set them apart from other brands, and the clever use of silicon molds means that they can ensure consistency and optimize production. Sell on Etsy. Etsy is a great option for makers who are just starting out since the platform exposes sellers to an existing network of engaged shoppers who may be interested in the products they create. If you are starting your business without much of an audience, this could be a great way to generate your first few sales and grow your brand awareness. While Etsy does have a large base of potential customers, your products may face competition with other stores. In order to crack the algorithm and start appearing in search results, you'll need to devote time to carefully crafting your listings using keywords and high quality photos. Your store is likely to be one of many options in your chosen category, so following the platform's best practices will be key to helping you stand out. Once you have developed a following for your business, you may want to move your store to an e-commerce platform like Shopify. By doing so, you can fully customize the look and feel of your brand, and you'll have more options to expand your business by integrating with other apps and tools. Old World Kitchen is a family-owned business selling beautiful handcrafted kitchen goods like heirloom wooden spoons and cookware. In their early days, they built their business exclusively on Etsy, benefiting from the infrastructure and community that the platform provided. They only switched to Shopify when they needed more control over their website's branding and access to tools to help them scale. To this day, they credit Etsy for their early success and recommend the platform for handmade businesses in the early stages of growth. Number five, sell on Amazon. Just like with Etsy, Amazon provides a huge global audience of potential customers for your business. It's the go-to e-commerce platform for many consumers, and Amazon makes it easy to get set up as a seller in just a few minutes. Depending on the products you choose to sell, this can also be a very scalable business model, especially if you make use of Amazon's fulfillment program to ship and deliver your orders. That said, with so many sellers in the marketplace offering similar products, it can be difficult for your business to gain attention. You'll also be unable to maintain a relationship with your customers over time, as Amazon does not allow sellers to keep in touch with buyers after purchase. Most of all, since Amazon sets the rules for their platform and algorithm, it may be challenging to generate sales, especially if you're competing with a product that Amazon itself produces. One way to find success selling on Amazon is to use the platform as just one sales channel in your business, in addition to your own e-commerce store. This means you can benefit from Amazon's global reach and be discovered by new potential customers while still maintaining your client relationships and creative control over your business. Homesick Candles is a great example of a product-based business that sells through both an online store and on Amazon. Their e-commerce store is their home base, where they can customize their user experience and stay connected to customers, while their Amazon store introduces them to new audiences. Number six, digital products. A digital product is any asset that you can sell repeatedly without maintaining inventory. This could be anything from a downloadable PDF to a piece of software, design kit, template, or ebook. Since there's nothing to ship or produce, these products are extremely scalable and have low overhead costs, which leads to great profit margins on every sale. What's the catch? Well, digital products tend to be lower priced than a one-to-one -one service or luxury physical product might be. 
you're also likely to face competition with others in your industry as the market for online learning is growing in almost every niche. Most importantly, you'll need to have a certain level of expertise to ensure that you're teaching or providing resources that will genuinely help your customers. Digital products can work really well as an additional income stream for a business, especially if you already have an audience you can monetize. If not, don't worry. One benefit to the digital product option is that there is very little risk to getting started. You can easily create a digital asset without spending any money up front to test the market and expand based on your results. In his business, SEO for the rest of us, Brendan Hufford teaches the basics of search engine optimization to entrepreneurs. His business includes several income streams, but digital products feature prominently as a way to monetize his experience while keeping his work accessible to new customers. Because his products are evergreen, they offer him a powerful way to help his clients and generate income over the long term. If you want to build passive income and learn how to sell digital products, just click here to watch this ultimate guide. Number seven, media. Whether you're a writer, artist, photographer, or designer, the internet provides so many opportunities to use your creative talents to generate income. This business model is similar to the digital product option, only in this case, you're growing a following that centers around your creative pursuits. Some examples of this revenue stream might be selling access to your music, publishing a digital magazine, running a paid podcast, writing a members only newsletter, or selling your art or photography online. As a creator, you will have to put in effort to make this option pay off. To be successful, you'll need to create a brand for yourself, build a following, and of course, set up the systems and infrastructure to be paid for your work. But the startup costs are pretty low and the possibility of scaling up your revenue is high, depending on the kind of media you're selling. For a creative person, this can be a very rewarding and exciting business to build. Fred Jourdain is an artist, cartoonist, and designer who creates beautiful original art available for sale through his website. In addition to being an online store, his site also showcases a thoughtful collection of other projects, interviews, and philosophies, all of which serve to create powerful connections with his followers and build his brand. Number eight, blogging. It's simple and cheap to start a blog, but it's not always easy to turn it into a business. The keys to becoming successful as a blogger are to choose a specific niche, provide valuable and consistent content, and then stay patient. It will take time for your blog to gain organic search traffic, but once it takes off, you'll have lots of options for monetizing it, including showing ads or doing paid promotions for brands, selling physical products, offering digital products or media, marketing your freelance services, or creating a paid membership for your followers on a platform like Patreon. Depending on the monetization option you choose, blogging has the potential to become a very scalable business model and only requires your time and dedication to get started. A great example of a successful blog is the house that Lars built, which covers all things interior design, home decor, and personal style. Because of their large following, this blog was able to be monetized using a variety of strategies, including affiliate programs, running ads, and selling custom products. It is now a very profitable full-time venture for its creators. If you want to learn how to grow your audience and make money blogging, we've got you covered. Click this link right here. Number nine, affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing continues to grow in popularity since the barrier to entry is very low and usually requires no money to get started. These days, there are lots of affiliate programs to choose from, whether you work directly with manufacturers or through a third-party affiliate platform. All you need to do is sign up with one of these partners to receive your custom affiliate links and start promoting products and services to your followers. If someone makes a purchase using your link, you'll receive a commission. While the amount of your commission will vary depending on the product, over time, affiliate marketing has the potential to become a very lucrative income stream. If you don't have an existing audience, this strategy will require patience as you find your specific niche or target customer and grow your reach. Affiliate marketing also pairs nicely with the strategy of blogging as having your own site allows you to create helpful resources to point customers towards the products and services you endorse. One caveat with this form of marketing is that it's essential to build trust with your audience. You should only promote products and services that you genuinely recommend and are enthusiastic about. If you create low quality content just so that you can use affiliate links, you're likely to receive low quality results. The most prominent example of a successful, trustworthy affiliate marketing website is The Wirecutter, owned by the New York Times. Their reviews are well-researched and thoroughly tested by industry experts and explain in detail their reasons for promoting specific products. While they do receive a commission for each successful sale, they work hard to ensure that their suggestions carry weight. 
They only recommend high quality products that consumers are likely to enjoy using, which means that their customers, myself included, will be loyal for the long term. Number 10, online courses and workshops. If you're an expert in your field or have helpful knowledge to share that others would benefit from, creating an online course could be a great money-making option for you. Online courses usually cost very little to produce, do not require storing inventory, and just like digital products and media, are theoretically infinitely scalable. But before you dive right into this option, here are three things to consider. First, it's not just about the content, it's about the whole package. To set your course apart from all the free information available on the internet, you'll need to make sure that your material is clearly organized and thoughtfully structured. Second, courses require marketing. You can't just create your course and expect the money to start rolling in. You'll need to set aside dedicated time for promoting and sharing your course in order for it to be successful. And lastly, not all niches are equally lucrative. People tend to spend money on their professional development, their businesses, or a beloved hobby. Keep that in mind when creating your course and know that for some less popular niches, you may have to adjust your price accordingly. One business that has been successful with online workshops is The Content Planner, a company that helps entrepreneurs plan their online content. In addition to their popular physical planner, they also offer virtual workshops to teach the basics of content marketing and creating a monthly content plan. By offering these workshops online, they're able to keep their costs low and scale their business to serve more of their customers. If you want to learn how to create an online course that sells, we created a video that will take you through the process step by step. Just click right here. Number 11, freelance services. No matter what your skill set, chances are you can charge good money for your services by offering them to clients online. As more businesses go virtual, the demand is increasing for people with skills in everything from marketing to writing to graphic design and everything in between. Even better, you can easily get started without spending anything except the time and energy it takes to promote your services to friends and family. Not to sound like a broken record here, but if you choose to offer freelance services, niching down will be key to setting yourself apart. Focus on your customer's pain point and be clear about how you can solve it for them. Your services will likely be targeted at business clients, so be sure to describe how your work can create a valuable outcome in their business, such as increased traffic and leads, and use testimonials from your other customers to support your claims. While freelance services are easy to start, they're harder to scale since you're often trading your time for money. If you stop working, the cash flow stops too, so it can be smart to pair your freelancing work with another income stream like one of the others I've mentioned in this video. That being said, many freelance business owners love the work they do and can make a good income working with a small selection of high paying clients. So even though this option is less scalable, it can definitely be both sustainable and profitable. Elise Dobson is a freelance writer for B2B software as a service companies. She has a specific niche which helps her stand out in a crowded market and become the obvious hiring choice for her ideal customer. She also teaches other writers to grow profitable freelance businesses through a membership community, which acts as an additional income stream for her business. Once you have your business strategy picked out, you're going to need a way to sell your products or services to your customers. With Shopify, setting up your own online store is simple, fast, and totally customizable. Shopify also integrates with hundreds of helpful add-ons to optimize your store for dropshipping, print on demand, and so much more. And it comes with a free, no commitment, two week trial. Click the link below to start building your online store today. Now that I've outlined 11 proven strategies for making money online, let me know in the comments below. Which of these strategies are you interested in trying out for yourself? And once you have your idea, make sure to check out our video, how to write a business plan in 10 steps to help you start your business from a solid foundation. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Stephanie Pellet, and I'll see you next time.